Good afternoon, everybody Uneducated Economist here. Thought I would talk a little bit about how China is dumping these U.S. Treasuries. Now, a lot of people have come to me and asked me about this, saying, hey, how come the Chinese government is getting out of the U.S. dollar? And now, I don't really feel that that is what's taking place. I really feel that China is trying to get more into dollars. In fact, that's what they want, is dollars in hand. And I know a lot of people are going to argue with this one, but what is the easiest way to get a hold of dollars? Is to sell U.S. Treasuries. U.S. Treasuries are about the most liquid asset there is in the world. When it comes to something that is close to cash, but isn't cash, U.S. Treasuries are pretty much it. Now, a lot of times people will use U.S. Treasuries as if it was cash. Like if you're doing world trade and you have a debt that is due, a lot of times the people who are accepting payment will accept U.S. Treasuries as payment because those U.S. Treasuries are so liquid that they could just cash them in any, any time and that there's plenty of people out there who would be willing to you know, fork over cash for these U.S. Treasuries. And that is really what I feel is taking place is that China recognizes that there is going to be continual interest rate increases. And if the interest rates continue to go up, the U.S. Treasuries, the price will come down and the yields will rise. Well, if you're sitting on a bunch of treasuries, that means the value of your asset is going to come down. So what better way to protect your portfolio or to protect the purchasing power of whatever it is that you have than it is to get into cash, get out of the asset that is going to diminish, like the U.S. Treasury if the yields continue to go up, and get into that safe haven, which is cash itself. Because if you go and look around the world, there is pretty much no other currency that does quite like cash does. When you go to do world trade, yeah, you're going to find countries, especially now when you have all these sanctions and stuff like that taking place in Russia or on Russian government, you're going to find that the sovereign currencies of nations who are not necessarily friends of the United States, those are going to become more prevalent. They're going to start doing deals like Saudi and you know, Russia or Saudi and China or Saudi and India. And these, you might find where you know these particular nations are going to do deals in their sovereign currency, whether they do it in yuan or rupees or whatever it is that they're going to do that transaction in. Now, that is a very small, small portion of the global trade that has taken place out there. The majority of it is done with U.S. dollars. And there's very little chance of that changing tomorrow. Now, there are situations like the BRICS nation, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. These guys are setting up a trade, a world trade distribution, transactions, everything to compete with the United States in the SWIFT system, which is the, basically the communication system that the United States uses, mainly the Federal Reserve uses, in order to do the global transactions around the world. But the BRICS nations are setting something up. They are not even remotely close to being a competitor yet. Are they getting there? Yeah, at some point. They'll probably make their way up there. But they're not going to compete tomorrow. They're not even close yet. There is nothing else out there like the U.S. dollar. So when you read these articles about how China is dumping U.S. treasuries for seven months straight, that is China realizing that the Federal Reserve is going to continue to push pressure on the monetary policy to lift interest rates, tightening up that monetary policy, bringing in the liquidity, and that is going to cause cash to get stronger. It's gonna cause the US dollar to get ever increasingly stronger. And if you are a nation who is going to be doing global world deals, then you're gonna need cash on hand. And if that cash is going to grow stronger by the day, then the last thing you want is a bunch of assets that are going to devalue in price because the dollar is growing stronger. And that's what's happening with the US treasuries as those yields rise. So I don't feel that China is trying to get out of the dollar because they're nervous about the dollar and whether or not they're gonna be able to do global trade with that in the future. Like they're not getting out of dollars saying, I don't want this stuff. They're getting out of US treasuries so they can get into dollars. They want cash, that's what they want. And it's really what everybody wants at the end of the day. I mean, you think about any asset that's out there, anytime anybody ever describes it, even if they're talking about inflationary scenarios, they always talk about it as the end result being the U.S. dollar. 
right? I bought this house for 250,000, I sold it for 450,000, always in dollars. They didn't say I bought it for $250,000 and sold it for, you know, 100 bitcoins or something like that. I mean, that's of course that would be a lot, but <clears throat> but you guys get on you understand what I'm trying to get at here. The idea that everybody is holding on to their assets so that they can exchange them for something other than a dollar isn't out there. Like nobody has that idea. Everybody is thinking about how much it's going to be worth in dollars come the future. And that's the same that it goes across pretty much every nation, every asset, every commodity that you can possibly think of. There's very rarely do you find anything out there that's going to be priced in yuan or rupees or rubles or even gold or bitcoin. Everything is priced in dollars. So there's no way that the dollar is going to fail tomorrow or even the next day. And I see that a lot of times when you find that there is, you know, a nation that is doing something like this. People just immediately think this is it. This is like... This is the nail in the coffin of the US dollar. Not even close, it's not even. What they are doing is they're trying to figure out another way to do a transaction that is not in the US dollar because the US dollar is so much stronger. That's really the case of it. And they're not trying to get out of the dollar because they don't want it, they're trying to get out of the dollar because they're so hard to get, because they're so valuable, that they are trying to figure out a way that they can do transactions without being reliant on this global dominant currency like the US dollar, but it's not gonna happen. I mean, there's gonna be the rare occasions, but as far as the dominance goes, it's going to be the US dollar, and it's probably going to continue to be the US dollar for quite some time. What you are going to find when it finally fails, when the dollar is finally coming to the end, you're gonna know it because there is going to be a huge bubble. People will be looking at the dollar saying, you should be saving in dollars. When you hear this, when people are saying, there is no better currency than the dollar. Everybody should be saving in dollars. The dollar is the strongest currency in history. And when you start hearing about how the dollar can buy more than you could ever possibly imagine, that is when you wanna get out of the dollar. When everybody else is talking about how great it is. Right now, everybody's talking about how crappy it is and how you're gonna lose all your purchasing power to inflation if you hold on to your dollars. That's the incorrect way to think about it because just look at what China's doing. China is not selling those treasuries to get out of the U.S. asset, or they are trying to get out of the U.S. asset, but not to get out of the U.S. dollar. They're trying to get into the dollar by selling U.S. assets, and they don't want to see their portfolio diminish. That's the real reason why they're getting into it. I mean, you think about it. If you want to buy something cheap, you have to be in cash already. And that's the position that they're taking. They're sitting, they're getting into that cash position so that they can take advantage of a recession when the downturn happens. And I, I, I know a lot of people are gonna argue with that one, but that's really what I feel is taking place. And you know, if they didn't want the dollar, if China didn't want the dollar, they would not have gone around the globe over the last 10, 15 years doing this Belt and Road Initiative where they lent countries hundreds of billions of dollars in US dollars. Not in Yuan, they lent it to them in US dollars. They're due back in dollars. Don't tell me that China doesn't want dollars. They want dollars just fine. In fact, they would love to see the dollar grow stronger and put the hurting on all these nations, all these sovereign nations and all these corporations around the world that they have lent money to so that they could build up their Belt and Road Initiative. When those countries, when those nations can't pay their bills, they're coming to China saying, hey, let's restructure this. And China's saying, no, I don't think so. How about you pay all that you owe us or you give up your natural resources? You give up that power company. You give up those ports. That's really where the pain is going to be felt with the strong dollar is seeing China actually benefit from it. All right. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.